Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I want to share some deep and advanced features for your Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. This phone, just like its predecessors, is an amazing smartphone full of deep and rich features. So let's dive in and discover everything. Before we do dive in, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. All right, let's go. All right, so let's talk about all these advanced tactics. So let's go to the settings, and they're all coupled under a menu. It's called the advanced features right over here. So tap on that, and the one on the top should be uh, enabled by default. If it is not, make sure it is enabled. Uh, this makes sure when you're charging your smartphone on a wireless charging pad, that in fact it is using the fast wireless charging standard for faster charging speeds. The next one over here is pretty simple. Basically, uh, if you enable this, uh, as long as you are staring at the actual phone, uh, the sensors on the front of the phone actually sense that you're looking at it, and it makes sure that the screen actually stays awake so long as you're staring directly into the screen, uh, like this image right over here. So make sure that it's enabled uh, if that's the feature that you're in fact looking for. Now let's go back and then the next one is the games. So I'm going to talk about the games mode towards the end because it is quite uh, in depth. So let me skip this for now and I come right back to it towards the ending. Uh, it's a fantastic feature as well. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite features. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, but maybe you have the Samsung Galaxy S9, which is a smaller form factor. Uh, this feature may not be that important for S9 users. Uh, for the S9 Plus, however, uh, the one-handed mode makes one-handed operation very easy. So let's uh, go inside. By the way, if you click over here, it turns on the option. But if you tap towards the left side, it goes into the detailed settings. So basically, if you enable this, it, it enables the one-handed mode. And what you can do is you can do a couple things to activate the one-handed mode. You can use a gesture or you can use the home button. I like to use the home button, so let's tap on this guy. And let's tap on the home button three times, and I'm going to show you exactly what happens. So one, two, three, and boom, it's actually uh, lowered in size, so now you can use it easier uh, with one hand. Now, of course, you may be left-handed or right-handed. If you are left-handed and you're using it like this, uh, you can tap on this icon. It's going to left justify for easier access. So you can um, basically touch the entire screen just with your thumb. And of course, one more thing you can do, this may be a little bit too small for you to see everything. What you can do is you can uh, press on the corner here and you can actually increase the size of that one-handed mode, uh, window mode. So that's also a fantastic customization, uh, customization feature. When you're done with the one-handed mode, all you do is tap anywhere on the screen and boom, it goes right back to the regular standard. All right, so that's the one-handed mode. I would just keep it enabled by default, and I do recommend using the button instead of the gesture, uh, because with the gesture, uh, when you accidentally swipe from the corners, it might activate the one-handed mode without you having to actually need it. Now, the next one is actually uh, another one of my favorites. Uh, it's the finger sensor gestures. So basically, uh, if you enable this, you can use a fingerprint sensor to bring down the notifications panel. So let me show you how, how that works. So grab the phone, and basically this is what you do. You pull this down, and the control center pops right up, as you can see. If you pull it up, it goes up. If you pull it down, it comes back. And all I'm doing in the back here is this gesture, okay? So that's absolutely fantastic. So make sure that is enabled. It's a really nice way to access the screen. And the next one over here is the quick launch camera. So basically, I recommend that you have this enabled at all times. It allows you to just double tap the power button, which launches the camera from any screen, even if your phone is actually turned off. So if my phone was turned off right now, and let's say I was walking around and I saw something, I want to take a quick shot off. All I do is pull the phone from my pocket, double tap the power button in speed, and boom, it launches the camera right away. Uh, let me just keep that on. And then from here, you can start to take uh, pictures on the spot immediately. Of course, you cannot see anything right now because the camera is covered, but here it is. The camera has been launched, as you can see. All right, so that's the quick camera gesture. Let's go back in here, and there we are. The next one over here, uh, if you tap this, it allows you to launch the Device Assistant app. The Device Assistant app is simply uh, the Google Assistant in this scenario, 
And if you have anything else available, you can use that as well. So if you do go tap on this one over here, uh, it actually shows you that it can go to the internet. It can uh, do nothing if you don't want it. You can actually disable it or you can tap this and that's going to allow you to bring up Google Assistant basically just like this. If you press and hold, boom, it's going to come right up. I didn't set it up yet, but after you set it up, you can ask the Google Assistant any question that you want. Or, like I said, if you tap this guy, whoops, uh, if you tap over here, now again, if you tap on this side, it goes to the settings. Uh, but if you tap on this side, it goes into the options. So if you click none, and if you press and hold, nothing happens. Okay, so, so Google Assistant can actually be disabled if you don't desire it. Then again, tap this. I like to use it, so I'm going to keep it right here. Disagree to the terms. Go right back. All right, so let's go down. And the next option that we have is called the multi-window. So this is the multitasking option on the actual smartphone. Now, if I tap on multi-window, there's a couple options here. Uh, let's look at this one first. This is the pop-up view action. So if I enable the pop-up view action, what I can do is if, if I launch something like the, let's say, calculator over here, so what I can do is I can actually uh, put my finger here. Uh, I'm putting this over here so it doesn't slide the phone, but I can go like that. Oops. And that's going to allow me to minimize uh, that window. It becomes a pop-up window. Uh, I can put this anywhere that I want if I so desire. And I can even, what I can do is I can tap this icon. That's going to minimize that um, app. And I can put it anywhere on the screen for later usage. And of course, if I tap on any time, it expands. And I can resize it at all times. I can even make it smaller if I wanted to. And I can tap this icon in the middle, and that's going to maximize it. All right? So that's the pop-up view action over here. If you enable this, you can use it on many apps. You can use it on Chrome, on the phone application, on the calendar application, on the calculator application, and many other Samsung built-in apps. Now, this one here, the Use Recent Apps, is you can enable this. And if you go inside, you have two options. You can either use a split screen view or the snap window. With the split screen view, it's very simple. So let's say that I have this screen running here, but I want another screen uh, at the bottom or the top. What's going to happen is I can press and hold the recent button, and it's going to activate the multitasking mode. It's going to split the screen. Now, whatever app you're focused on is going to go to the top by default, and the other app can open at the bottom. So let's try that real quick. Press and hold. Boom. So that is on the top now. And then at the bottom from here, you can choose any other app. And now you can do a split screen multitasking. Okay. So that's why you can, that's how you use the recent uh, apps key. Now, again, you can disable that. You can still do multi window if you tap this. Uh, and if you t tap that double icon over here, that still allows you to activate multi window. But uh, when you have this enabled, uh, let me, let me pull this down. Okay, when you have this enabled, it just makes launching the multi window much easier. Again, any screen that you're looking on, let's go out here and launch another app here. Uh, let's just go to uh, Google. Okay, now let's say I want to use this and another window at the same time. I tap and hold on recents, boom, it shifts the main app to the top. And at the bottom, I can either pick one of these guys or I can go to the app list and I can multitask with any available and supported app. There you go. Now, when you're done with it, when you want to cancel it, you can press and hold one more time. And again, the window on the top covers the entire screen and the window on the bottom disappears. So that's the, um, that's the, um, the recents button for multitasking. And again, you can also do the snap window. Now, instead of doing a split screen, it will do the snap window. So tap on snap window, press and hold, boom. So basically, you can select an area of any given app, click Done, it snaps that to the top, and at the bottom, you can do uh, multitasking. Now, the great thing with these things is they're always resizable, so you can always customize it later. But that's Snap Window and multitasking using the Recents button. All right, so let's uh, exit from everything here and go back into the uh, actual setting. Go back into Advanced Features. So that was a multi-window, multitasking. And then you have the Smart Capture. Uh, smart Capture basically allows you to uh, capture the screen. So basically what Smart Captures allow you to do is if you slide your hand over the screen, it takes a screenshot. Now when you're sliding your hand over the screen, 
you have to make sure that the, the hand, the bottom of your hand is actually touching the screen. So when you swipe over like this, it just took a screenshot and then it gives me other options at the bottom here. Uh, I can actually crop this image now or whatever, and then I can save it. Okay, but again, this is to capture the screen by swiping your hand across the display. So that's Smart Capture. Uh, the next one over here, the next one over here is Palm Swipe to Capture. Uh, the difference, they're actually the exact same thing, okay? So this one, also you swipe the screen, takes an image, but uh, this one over here, if this is enabled, it allows you to add extra options after you capture. So if I swipe my hand right now, it took the image, but then it's also giving me all these other options at the bottom, uh, as you just saw. But uh, if I didn't have the swipe, the smart capture enabled, if I had disabled this, I can still do the swipe to capture, but it's just gonna save the image, take the screenshot and save it directly into the gallery. But if this is enabled, not only does it save it, I mean, not, not only does it take a screenshot, it gives me additional options at the bottom. Uh, oops, there we go these options right here. So I can draw on it now and all that stuff. So that's why the uh, Smart Capture and the Palm Swipe to Capture work hand in hand uh, if you so desire. All right, so the next one is Direct Call. This is a very cool option if you know how to use it. Basically, uh, if your phone rings and you pick up the phone and you put it to your ear, just like this girl over here, it's going to automatically answer the phone. That's not bad at all. Now let's go back. The Easy Mute option is another great thing. So if I tap on this one and if I enable it, basically if somebody calls you or if your alarm rings, you can mute the alarm or the call simply by putting your hand on the screen or by flipping your device like this and put it on the table. And that's gonna make sure that the alarm actually turns off or if somebody's calling you, that call gets muted. That's a very convenient little feature. Now, if you go back over here, uh, we have the swipe to call or send messages. If I tap on this one, you can swipe on a contact to actually send a message to them or take a call or make a call. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the phone. So let's go to the phone and we have a contact here, the recent contacts. Uh, here's a contact right here. What I can do is I can swipe to the left on top of the contact like this. That's going to activate the text messaging features. I can just send a text. Or if I go back here and I swipe this way, oops, if I swipe this way in a con on a contact, it can make a call. Okay, so if I swipe all the way, it's going to actually start making the call. Okay, so another great little feature. Now let's go back into advanced features and keep traversing through that menu. Uh, let's go all the way down. And over here, we have the dual messenger. I'm going to skip this feature. Uh, this feature basically allows you to run two different instances of the same application such as Facebook or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. So you can have two Facebook accounts running on two separate Facebook apps. It's a nice feature if you have double accounts uh, for whatever reason. And then let's go over here. This is a send SOS messages. If you tap on this guy, uh, you can enable this. And basically, let's, you have to agree to terms with this thing. Uh, what it allows you to do is if you enable this, I'm not going to do it right now, uh, it allows you to send a, a stress signal to a quick contact. And what you can do, let, you know what, let's uh, enable that real quick. Uh, let's add a recipient or create a contact. So you can create a contact, uh, emergency contact. Let's say the phone number is, click save. So what you can do right now, let's add that. Okay. So he, he's been added, the emergency contact right here. So what, what's going to happen is if you press the power button quickly three times, it's going to take a picture with the front camera, the rear camera, and it's going to attach five seconds of audio after you press the button. And then it's going to send a text message to that person, the emergency contact that we just created. All right. Could be your father, could be your mother, your brother, your sister, your friend, whatever. You can also disable these options, but I recommend that you, uh, if you if you want this option, uh, it's nice to have these on. It will send a picture using the front and the rear camera and also a five second audio. And that might give a clue to the person it goes to in case you are in real trouble. Okay, so that's send SOS uh, messages. Let's go back here. And then over here, what we have is we have direct share. 
just enable this by default. Uh, anytime you're sharing a photo or anything like that, this brings up a bunch of quick contacts to the top of your screen so you can just share with them directly. Then uh, we have the video enhancer. Again, something I would like you to enable because if you watch the video on any one of these apps, it's going to enhance the quality of your videos. It's going to give you a brighter and more vivid color uh, and that's going to be better. So even if you download more apps, they're going to show up right here. So right now, I don't have too many apps available, but if I download Netflix, uh, Crunchyroll, Amazon Prime, whatever, it's all going to show up right here and it's going to enhance the video playback on that thing. Now let's go back here and then what we have here is the touch sensitivity. Uh, I would increase this uh, if you're using a screen protector. So I, I'm not using one, I, I never do, but if you are using a screen protector, enable this so even with the screen protector on your phone, when you touch the phone, it works in optimum performance, okay? So these are, these are all the advanced features. Let's go back up here and talk about the games. So let's go right inside and then enable the game launcher. I can either click this button or I can tap over here and then click it again and it's gonna ask me, do you want to add the game launcher to the home screen? Let's click add, I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. So let's go back here and if I swipe over now, there's gonna be something called a game launcher sitting in the home screen. I can launch this guy, and then if there's any games that I have downloaded before, they're gonna show up here automatically, okay? And it's even saying uh, you can press and hold and get some actual uh, options on the actual game. We're not gonna do that right now. Uh, but what I wanna show you is at the bottom here, uh, you can switch between different performance modes. So we have the normal mode, if I tap it again, it goes to the battery saver mode. Uh, if I tap it one more time, it goes into the high performance mode, which is the best mode to play games in, but you can also be uh, pretty satisfied with just the normal performance mode. Now, uh, the, the big thing with the game launcher is when you actually launch and play a game. So, by the way, you can also swipe up here and it's gonna give you some more games you can download here. Okay, that's not a big deal. Uh, but if you launch a game, let's launch a game right now, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to see a small toolbox appear at the bottom here. You can tap these toolbox as the game is playing and get a bunch of cool options. The coolest of these options is the record button, which allows you to record the gameplay. Whoops. Uh, that allows you to record the gameplay or take a screenshot while you're actually playing a game. You can also enable full screen mode. Uh, no alerts during the game mode. So if you're playing the game and somebody sends you a text message, it's not going to accept that because you're playing a game. And all these other things here you can explore by yourself. Okay, but the biggest thing is the screenshot and the record. You can actually record gameplay and then upload that to YouTube or whatever you want. All right, so that tool here falls to the bottom left. Now let's go back here and that's the game launcher. But that's how simple it is, all right? So that's a fantastic thing. Uh, but that basically is everything with the advanced features. So if you go back in the advanced features, you can see that we went through everything from top to bottom. And uh, now you know all the advanced features that your phone comes with. Now, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and stay tuned for more videos to come. Uh, there's gonna be even more videos. This phone is really deep and rich, full of features and tricks everywhere. I'm gonna cover every single aspect of this smartphone. All right guys, so subscribe to Saki Tech, give this video a thumbs up, and have a fantastic day for now. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. Have a fantastic day.